one of the things we did uh, very early on is we digitized a lot of our processes. And we have a uh, Minds on Mobile smartphone app that has a tenant side and a staff side where a lot of paperwork and a lot of redundant processes are basically removed altogether and allows us to uh, achieve significantly higher margins that make our concept a lot more sustainable than it would have been in the traditional sense of the real estate uh, sector. So I think having founders who kind of look at it that way um, will definitely help. I think interdisciplinarity is, is positive in general and it's also something that Lars mentioned earlier. I think, you know, combining um, strengths uh, in different real estate sectors and, and the tech world actually would make lots of I think it makes sense, but for me personally, it's, I guess it's just a far, far down the road for me to even agree or disagree with it. Um, it depends really on who is leading that charge of that tech company and what the vision is and what they have in mind for, for all of that. Um, like, I'm just trying to declutter vanilla, so I can't really say, you know, whether a campus kind of thing would be good or, um, but it's an exciting idea, definitely, and I think it's, something that people can't ignore is, is happening throughout the world. I mean, we have Alibaba doing the same things or in, in China. So, yeah, so it's it's, um, it's happening. Uh, whether it's going to be happening to some of our neighbors in the region, we'll, you know, we're, we'll, we'll see. Um, I guess when I think about uh, technology, I think in addition to being able to drive efficiency, it's also being able to drive experience, right? When you think about some of the great technology products that you use, uh, they're like wonderful experiences, whether it's Airbnb or Instagram or kind of other things, right? Um, and so, you know, when I think about technology in the context of real estate, then I think about that whole physical experience when I walk into a building, right? Are you going to make me sign on a piece of paper that no one ever reads? So what I always sign is Mickey Mouse, right, on, on that piece of paper. No one ever checks it, right? That's a poor experience in a in 2020 where that is still how we're checking in people. So I think uh, it might be the developers that um, understand and implement technology, not for technology's sake, but to actually provide a better either commercial or residential experience will in the long term, I think, differentiate themselves from others. Obviously technology, technology has exactly enabled talking about the flexibility, the ability to work whenever and wherever. We're not stuck next to our filing cabinet to pull out an old telefax to check a document. We have access to, to the cloud. So in that regard, that's also why we, by the way, can work from home. The, 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 the real answer to that, by the way, when you ask people would you like to work from home is yes, and when you then ask further into it, it turns out they would like to work near home. Why? You don't want to be lonely, lonely. You want to interact with other people. And if you're not lonely, it's because you're being disturbed at home. So you would like to just work near home. And there comes the human factor in. The millennials are extremely successful. And statistics also show that millennials are aware that they're probably more successful than their skills and especially experience justifies. Our research also shows that most millennials are actually looking even to find a mentor. And therefore, the co-working is really where everybody becomes productive together. We learn from each other. And it's important to grow that co-working environment so that you have the millennial in blue jeans and a white t-shirt interacting with an old stuffy baby pool like me, that you have the startup together with the multinational, industry A and industry C, and trust me, remember I talked about the speed of change. You will always look at your industry and say, where will that be maybe 10 years from now? And then you think about question number two, what should I do for my company to take advantage of these changes? But question number three is, how do I stay relevant also 10 years from now? And as a baby boomer, I'm really relying on the millennials and our generation Z, because I need to learn from them, otherwise I will be obsolete. Things are changing so fast, I don't have the luxury any longer to go back to a classroom just to catch up. I have one question for you guys, and then uh, after that question, I'd like to ask the questions uh, from the audience. 
But you mentioned the whole actually health and wellness aspect. And I know there was an article that came out in my town. So with the sharing economy, all of this that you, you don't have to go through traffic, mental health is a, is a very important issue that we were actually, you're tackling. And the uh, idea of sustainability as well, the fact that you're sharing resources instead of buying one car each. So Young Rod, I mean, in terms of um, in that aspect of health and wellness, um, your business, what do you, what, how do you play a positive role in this? Great question. I mean, um, so earlier this month, it was mental, uh, World Mental Health Awareness Day uh, by the World Health Organization. And we participated in that and we held a large uh, survey amongst our uh, 3,000 tenants, asking them a lot of questions about basically their, their, their level of loneliness and, and, and how they address that. And um, so we put a focus on that and we partnered with the Philippine uh, Mental Health Association and DIWA uh, Mental Health Association, which is through UB. Um, and we're uh, having lectures, a lecture series this today and in the coming weeks, basically explaining to people that, that having some mental health issues is, is very normal and something that you can discuss. And that's just an example of some of the events and some of the care that we give to our uh, tenants. Uh, we have regular yoga classes, we have uh, gyms in our buildings, full, full gym, we have a boxing gym in our building with a full-time boxing coach. Um, we, we basically, we, we have food, food uh, preparation classes and, and what you can do with a microwave and it's still being healthy. So basically we try to be as creative as possible to, to make sure that people after they leave my town, because at the end of the day it's still kind of transi transi the transitional housing. Uh, after they leave housing, they, they leave more well-rounded, uh, more well-aware, and, and basically healthier, and, and with a focus on quality of life uh, compared to when they arrived. Paul, do you see that in terms of the surveys you want? Like uh, being able to be healthier, like that's what uh, the millennials are looking for when they're looking for a job? Yeah, no, I think uh, health, uh, wellness, um, is I think uh, you know you can see with uh, any time fitness right it's uh, massive here like this whole kind of fitness revolution that's happened here. Um, I think there's some aspects around diet that still need to be addressed uh, in the Philippines. Um, I think within Caliber we have a, a couple of things. One is priority zero. The most important things are your health, physical and mental, and your relationship health. If those are not well taken care of, how can I expect you to do a great job at work, right? And I think that philosophy just comes from having empathy. And I think if there's anything organizations can, do, can have a little bit more of, is a little bit more empathy uh, to the plight of the people that are working uh, within their organization. Having empathy that some people are having to spend two to three hours each way to get to work, right? And, and just understanding that that ultimately will take a toll on that individual and may ultimately take a toll on that business. And Lars, you and I have shared many beers and wine in your spaces and Regis. Yeah, and um, even without the wine and the beer, I mean, <laughs> this uh, co-working experience, I mean, when does it work and when is it life, like the work-life balance? Reality today is you can't separate the two. Others have mentioned it more or less directly today. Is that good or bad? I think it's fantastic because that actually makes life so much more gratifying. I mean, I, I cannot tell the difference. Have you seen the movie The Intern uh, with this retired uh, Robert De Niro, by the way, and then the young entrepreneur, and maybe she will uh, have an IPO, but she has to give up ownership and so on. And the way that, that they interact, I mean, at first they don't connect at all, at the end it's like absolute top leverage of their lives and experience and skills. And I, I think that makes life more fantastic. So before I go to my last question, is there one question from the audience? 